On today's show, I'm bringing back a returning guest and a returning company, if you will, Lexagen Holdings, Inc. You can find them on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol LXXGF. Also, if you're up there in Toronto, you can find them on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol L. XG and with us today, we're very fortunate, and lucky to have the CEO of the company, Mr. Uh, Dr. Jack Reagan. Dr. Jack Reagan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. You know, give my listeners just a little bit of about statement of yourself and uh, an about statement of the company. Then we'll get into the Q and A. Sure, about myself, um, I would say um, a veteran of the life sciences space. I first did my doctoral training in influenza biology. I studied how the virus effectively replicates and gets out of uh, cells. It was a very academic process. Uh, From there, I went on to work at a government lab. I was involved in developing instruments for the government for bio threat detection. Uh, The instrument I helped develop ended up becoming part of the BioWatch program, which is a Department of Homeland Security um, initiative that really is focused on providing bio-threat surveillance to major risk areas uh, in the United States, such as transit hubs and you know, places like Congress and the Olympics and things of that matter. After working at the National Lab, or actually while working at the National Lab, I ended up filing for patent protection of a new designed instrument that I felt have a, had a lot of advantages over what we were using for bio-threat analysis. And it's those patents that Lexagene is now uh, commercializing. However, briefly after leaving the National Lab, real quickly, I went on to help another startup company launch their product. Um, that startup company is called Quantalife. We were bought by Biorad for $162 million. So I've leveraged a lot of my experience from the Quantalife acquisition in building that company, that product up, to what we're doing here at Lexagen. I wanted to get started and talk about this, this virus flu that's going around the uh coronavirus is one of the most talked about topics right now, and I feel that it's very relevant to discuss your technology and how Lexagen will be able to help diagnose this type of virus in the future. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. So, so uh, again, stemming from my biothread experience and what Lexagen is doing, just to recap really quickly, Lexagen is a med tech device company. We have built a fully automated genetic analyzer that is exceptionally well suited for detecting infectious diseases. The coronavirus is just one example. So if you look at the coronavirus right now, obviously it's a recent outbreak. Uh, you know, back in December, um, people working at a seafood and animal uh, market in, in Wuhan, China, ended up becoming ill with pneumonia. Um, the pneumonia was quite severe. They didn't know it was causing the illness. And, and lo and behold, after doing some discovery work, the government identified the pathogen as being a coronavirus, uh, very similar to the SARS virus that you know, caused you know, numerous deaths you know, back in 2003. And so what makes our technology so well suited for detecting this virus is that our technology is designed... Um, to be placed at the point of care. So in this case, it would be placed, uh, in today's day, uh, it would ideally be being placed at airports, uh, where right now in the United States and Canada and other countries across the world uh, are very concerned about the spread of the disease. And so when people arrive anywhere who have a fever, uh, they should be screened for this particular coronavirus. The reason that makes our technology so well suited for this is it accepts liquid tests that can very, very easily be developed and shipped to places having our instrument and loaded onto the instrument. So the instrument does all of the hard work as far as analyzing the sample. And importantly, it can identify both the coronavirus as well as other common respiratory viruses. And making that distinction is extremely important for uh, individuals looking to really curtail the spread of the disease. I wanted to know, you know, and, and I'm, I'm excited about your, your machine. I thought you might be, be able to bring us up to speed on the uh, LX2. Where are we at on that? And when do you think we might be able to start monetizing? Yeah, so real quick on the history of the company, I'll get to your, your question in a moment. So the company was founded in October of 2016. Um, so we're now slightly over three years old. Uh, at the time of the founding of the company, I licensed you know, two patents from Livermore, and we had to reduce those patents into a working prototype. So we did that. We demonstrated the technology works. We've progressed the technology to the beta prototype phase. 
where we actually placed beta prototypes in hands of we expect to be future customers. And now we're in the stage of finalizing the instrument for commercial sale. And so we expect, you know, by the end of March to be finalizing that design. Uh, and once we finalize the design, we start the manufacturing process with the expectation of having our first uh, instrument sales in midsummer. And so during the course of the next several months, you know, some of the keys for the company moving forward are, of course, you know, getting prepared for this manufacturing, also getting the sales staff in place so that we have boots on the ground in advance of our, you know, commercial launch, such that we're collecting POs, you know, and those POs can be used to help us forecast how many instruments we should be building for our first commercial build. The, the LX2, explain that to, to myself and my listeners, if you would. What exactly is that going to do for you guys? So what the LX2 does is, it, at its core, we are a genetic analyzer. And this is extremely important because when you're talking about diagnostics, um, there's a lot of different ways to do diagnostics. The wave of the future is genetic-based testing. And so what the LX2 does it is capable of receiving a sample, that sample could be a, a sample collected at an airport, you know, from somebody who's suspected of having coronavirus. It could also be, you know, another clinical sample where, you know, somebody's at a hospital and feeling ill and either they're going to take a, a blood draw or, you know, they have an infected wound. Or on the veterinary market, you know, animals get sick just uh, similarly. To, to, to humans, and so absolutely the companion animal, these are your dogs and cats, is, is a huge uh, market which right now has effectively zero competition in it. And for that matter, we're also looking at the food safety space. You know, the food safety uh, sector is in desperate need of innovation. Our technology is very well suited for it. And so what makes our technology unique is, is that it takes in a sample, it concentrates the sample, that is concentrating the bacteria, the viruses. It does this all in an automated fashion. It extracts and purifies the genetic material, and then it takes that genetic material and it assembles a series of genetic tests to look for targets of interest. And when I say targets of interest, what we look to do is we look to not only identify what's causing the infection, but we also look to inform on how best to treat the infection. In today's world, you've certainly heard about superbugs. Yep. We're, we're clearly concerned about the coronavirus. It is a major threat which could turn into a worldwide pandemic. It could literally cost the lives of many, many people. But also concerning, albeit at a slower, you know, hopefully slower pace, is these superbugs and how hard they are to treat because right now, Current diagnoses, diagnostic tests, don't tell you quickly whether or not the pathogen is resistant to commonly prescribed antibiotics. And so what we do is we, again, look at the genetic code of these bacteria, and for that matter, if you, you could look at a virus or a, fungi, or a fungi, and you determine whether or not there are any genetic sequences that would confer resistance to a common therapy. And if we detect such sequences, we can inform the healthcare uh, provider that, hey, you know what? This is resistant to amoxicillin. Do not prescribe amoxicillin. Otherwise, the patient will come back days later and they'll be worse off. You should really be prescribing a different class of antibiotic to most effectively treat um, this, this patient. And so this allows for a, 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 a much higher quality of care right out of the get, get go. And it also allows for ultimately lower cost of care. Uh, when you have complications due to poor diagnostics, they become not only a hardship on the patient, uh, where that hardship may be obviously devastating consequences, but also it's a financial hardship. And so by really boosting the quality of diagnostics, you know, our company will really be able to drive efficiencies uh, in, in the quality of care and the cost of care. You've been listening to Dr. Jack Reagan, CEO of uh, Lexagen Holdings, Inc. You can find him on the OTCQB, ticker symbol LXXGF. You can find him on the TSX Venture, uh, ticker symbol LXG. Dr. Reagan, let me ask you this. How do you feel about the next 12 months and what, it lo what does it look like for investors, final design, and maybe taking orders for the LX2 uh, and commercializing that product? It's uh, really an, ex uh, an exceptionally exciting time for the company. As I said, you know, this company was founded three years ago. We've been through six capital raises. 
Um, we recently disclosed a $6.6 .6 million round in the fall. We now have sufficient capital to get to our commercial sale. And, and so whenever I'm out on the road, you know, speaking with potential investors, they're always like, okay, when are you going to start selling? When are you going to start selling? The good news is, is now we have enough capital um, to start selling our technology. And this, we expect, will result in a significant inflection point in our stock price. And so now is a great time to be looking at Lexagene. You know, we will be selling instruments this summer. Uh, we do expect, you know, there to be tremendous demand for our technology. Uh, and the future for us is, is something which we certainly think is bright. Uh, I, I have to confess, um, I don't, you know, forecast exactly what's going to happen in regards to the company. But people often ask me, you know, what's our exit strategy? You know, we are a startup. You know, what's my long-term goals for the company? Right. And I would at least uh, position that there, there are several paths uh, possible for us. Uh, one is, of course, staying independent and uplisting to the NASDAQ, where we get access to all of uh, the U.S. Uh, investor base, which is obviously enormous. Uh, and, you know, being on the NASDAQ really opens up the possibilities for a lot more funds to participate in owning your stock. So that's uh, path number one. Path number two is licensing out a particular market vertical to a strategic in the industry. Um, there are many big, big companies out there which are looking for technologies like ours. Some of those companies only play in one particular market vertical, and as such, they'd be interested in acquiring the rights uh, to operate in that space with our technology. And so effectively, we license off a, a, a fraction of the company uh, and pursue other uh, market verticals uh, internally. And the third option is, of course, a straight-out acquisition where a big strategic buys the, the entire company and worries about, you know, divesting if they so choose different market verticals. And so all three of those are, are certainly um, possibilities in the future. I don't know what will come to be. I can only tell you that, you know, right now from the people we've spoken to, including our beta customers who have tested the te technology in their own facility, there is a lot of excitement over what we're building. We know there's demand, and we're looking forward to providing instruments you know, in the near future. Well, this is what I can tell my listeners and your stockholders. The last time a gentleman was on the show, and that being Daryl, your president, the stock was trading at $0.37. Cents. Today it's trading at $0.54. Cents. And so you're absolutely right. It's going in the right direction. Dr. Reagan, I want to thank you for stopping by and coming on the show. I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing out there. Uh, hopefully you guys will come back either 40 or 50 days and give us an update of what's going on. I'd be happy to do that. Looking forward to it. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional.